Well, good morning again, brothers. Thank you so much for having me over. I'll be sharing. I always, uh, you know, I always uh, say it this way. You know what? There's a little disclaimer in the bottom, <laughs> even though we don't have it. You know, I'm not a, I'm not a preacher, but I love to share the word of God. And for me, it's a, such a privilege. You know, I've been praying a lot about this. And, uh, you know, I, I hope there's going to be a blessing for you and anyone who is actually able to listen. You know what? And, and, it, and it teaches you that if I could do it, if Brother Ponzi can do it, if Brother uh, Daryl can do it, anyone can um, do it. And that's sharing the word of God and the biggest hope that we have. So I'm going to be sharing my screen. I'm going to be sharing something really short. Uh, just allow me, Brother Ponzi, to share my screen if, you, if that's okay. I, I'm always like to do visual, but, um, you know, obviously we want to point everything through Jesus this morning. So I believe that um, I was, um, as you, some of you guys know, I do real estate. And I, it was such a joy yesterday. I was meeting um, two couples, you know, I mean, actually, uh, yeah, two couples for the first time, you know what? And they're like, oh, I knew that you were you were different at the end because, you know, they're like, I was sharing with them, you know what, that I, I'm a believer in everything. And it's such a joy because that, conf, you know, that confirms the pure grace of God that we have. And, you know, it's at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what we do, it's what God, what God is able to do. And that's the whole that's the whole point. One thing that, you know what, I mean, I was telling brother uh, Ponzi, you know what, I mean, one of the things that is in my heart is always missions. And um, <laughs> I actually, when I sent the message to brother Ponzi, I, I was saying, I, I meant to put the dot in there, you know what, saying what God has spoken, you know, in other words, you know, what's the message that God uh, wanted to share. And pretty much the message is God has called you and me, brothers, okay? God has called you, whoever is a believing, we've been called, um, I always believe not just to keep all the gifts, uh, keep all the talents for ourselves, but I think that God has called us to, to be a blessing um, to others. And more than ever, you know what, I mean, we've seen how we are at the, points, uh, at the point in life, you know what, and, you know, in this world that everything that we know as good has been called bad and everything that has been called bad has been called good. I mean, there's no even shame anymore on um, things that are being shown up there, you know what, and, and it's, it is, yes, it is sad, and sometimes, you know, as Christians, you know what, a little bit upsetting. Thing, right, you know what, I mean, this is this is something that I, I want to encourage you, brothers, and me, and it's a huge, huge um, you know, um, waking call for us to be bold more than ever. You know what, I mean, um, i seen, uh, we all seen, you know what, I mean, how things are going around, you know, uh, it always reminds me, you know what, what, the word God said, you know what, that the, on the on the um, last days, you know what, everything that will be good will be called bad, and everything that will be that is bad is called good, and there is no shame on that anymore, you know what, and and it's, it, as, I, as I was saying, you know, I don't know if you guys hear me on that, you know what, that it, even though it's it, it breaks our heart to know, um, you know, especially for the new generation and everything, I think it's a waking call for us, brothers, because, you know, the, the Bible says that we are the light of this world, right? You know, we're the soul of this world. And I love, you know what, I always enjoy Brother Ponce, you know what, I mean, the videos that he does and everything. And, you know, that really speaks a lot to my heart. So today I want to talk to you guys with the, from the point of view of missions, right? You know, as I was telling Brother Ponce, you know what, my heart is always missions, you know, because we always think about missions, you know what, I mean, going really far away, you know, uh, but I guess, you know, the, the big mission is sharing the gospel. It's starting even for a house, you know, with our kids, with our neighbors, with people that we meet. Every opportunity that we have, you know, what to face someone face to face, I believe that is a great opportunity to bring the gospel, bringing people, you know, what to the whole meaning of Jesus dying in the cross and having a new opportunity, a new meaning in life. You know, uh, the more we, we're digging into that, uh, subject obviously you know what I mean it, it's it's a bigger blessing for them because you know a lot of people will come to Jesus if you speak to them you know remember it's not a job to to uh, convert them but it's our job to share so I want to share based on this uh, uh, verse right here and I'm gonna grab you know something that you know it's been touching me a little bit um, and that is uh, so some reason we just ignore what it says on the right but it's Matthew 28 16 to 20. We all, have, we all have heard it. I'm sure you guys probably even know it by memory. But just, you know, hang in there with me. You know what? I mean, hopefully someone is listening to this. 
you know, they're, they're you know, they, they are blessed with this uh, verse as well. But, you know, we're going to read it from 16 to 20. It says, then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountains where Jesus had told them to go. Where they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to, the, to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And this is the big, the big commandment, right? The big, uh, uh, there's another word that I want to use, but pretty much you know what I mean? The, the job that God left us, you know, to do. Jesus t- said it this way, right? Therefore, you know, Brother Ponzi, Brother Freddie, Brother Daryl, Brother Lauren, therefore, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I, I am with you always to the better, very end of the, the ages. I think that, you know, something... Um, you know, the last word right there went blue. So this is a big commandment for you and me, brothers, okay? You know, to, to go out, you know, and speak the truth uh, and the truth that we know it as, as, as Christians, right? We know boldly. We know, you know, more than ever that God is real. <laughs> How do we know that God is real? Because we have, it. number one, we have experienced that, right? Second, we, we've been changed you know, I I was a filthy you know person before, and not that I'm person, not not that I'm perfect, but you know because of G, what Jesus did in the in the cross, you know He cleaned me, and above everything, He gave me and you brothers a new purpose. And for those that are listening, hopefully someone is listening today. I want to remind you that it doesn't matter how you are, how you feel. God said, "Come as you are." Why does it say "come as you are"? Because it's almost like you know what. God knows that you are broken. God knows that, you know what, I mean, you have gone through a lot of things in life. It could be, you know what, I mean, name it, right? It could be physical, it could be mental abuse, anything. But God can fix your life and give you a new purpose. That's that's what we, that's the biggest hope that we have in Jesus. So the God that we believe is a God that, you know, changed our hearts, changed the way that we are, changed the way that we, that we speak and everything. And it's a battle. It's a battle. You know, this is not about who is perfect, who is the person that is more holy or anything. You know, this is about recognizing that we need a God in our lives. And, you know, um, uh, Romans 10, 9 says, you know what? Uh, if you confess with your mouth, right? First of all, confessing with your mouth. And, in, and if you believe in your heart that God, that, uh, that Jesus died and rose on the third day, you'll be saved. Saved of what? Save, you know what, I mean, of, of the, the last judgment, right? Save of, you know what, of living a misery, a misery life, running away, you know, probably from relationship to relationship, running from, you know what, I mean, drugs or alcohol, whatever whatever that is, you know, at the end of the day, God says, you know what, you'll be safe. You'll be safe from living a, a life that, you know, is empty at the end of the day. Because, you know, let's be honest, without God, you know, we're empty. doesn't matter, you know what, I mean, I work in an industry where I see people that, you know, that they are, you know, filthy rich, you know, let's put it that way, but they're empty, you know, they, there is no, there is no hope, uh, you know, because they, they feel like, you know, there's something missing, and that's something, you know, what that God gives us, and uh, for us, that we, we believe, and we, um, um, we believe in Jesus, you know, there's a big commandment, right, therefore, go, go, that's a that's a word that you know what it always hits me like almost like a punch in the face. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. You know, we always have to be you know sharing the, the word of God. You know, and you know we're gonna you know if you haven't been rejected yet, we will be rejected eventually. You know, why you'll be judged. You know, no matter what, you know someone will judge you. You know, I mean, I'm sure Brother Ponzi. You know, he has some fans, you know what, I mean, brother Daryl and everything. Why? Because, you know what, people focus on the OU. But they don't understand, you know what, when you leave, your, when you give your life to Jesus, you know, it's a, it's a work in progress. You know, work in progress. You know, we're always being work every day, every day. But the key is, you know what, I mean, honoring God in absolutely everything that we do, that we say, that we see. Why? Because, you know what, those are the things that bring honor to God. So that's a big commandment for, for you and me, brothers. You know what I mean? Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. You know, I, I love, you know, that the brother, this brother, uh, Tan, you know, he's been with us. I mean, I don't know, probably for years already from what I know. 
And, you know, this brother has been a blessing. I mean, we've been a blessing as a group, you know what, when I join you guys, but he's been a blessing as well, you know, and, and how beautiful it is, you know what, with technology as crazy as it is today and day, you know, uh, we can connect from corner to corner, you know, in the world. There's so many ways that we can, that we can uh, share the gospel today. And for us, you know what, it's literally using every platform to bring honor and glory to God. You know, I, I've been in, in this situation, you know what, where people have literally, you know, text me or call me, you know what, you know, to rebuke me and tell me, Fred, you know what, you shouldn't mix business with, uh, with God. And you know what, I have such a hard time explaining to them, you know what, that I'm in the God of business. If God is not in my business, I'm broke. <laughs> you know, if God is not there, you know what, I mean, the truth is, you know what, I mean, that is my rock. That is my foundation. Without God, you know, I remember, remember you know what, hopefully this person is not listening, but you know what, I mean, if, if it is, I'll tell you, you know what, God loves you. And you know what, I mean, uh, you know, I respect everybody, but, you know, the truth is that we as uh, as believers, doesn't matter the religion, I believe in my opinion, it's more about the relationship that you have in God, because even Jesus said that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free, free from, you know, everything that you believe. You know, as long as you believe in the God, of the, the, the Jesus that is on the cross, you know, the died on the cross and uh, rose on the third day, you know, we have hope. So that we're in the business of God, especially for all of us, you know, that we're perfect. No, we're not, but we're in that business. Uh, we're going to jump in right now, you know, at the first Corinthians uh, 1, 27, 29. And this is, this is something, you know what, I mean, it always gives me joy, yeah. but, you know, this is what gives me a lot of hope. In 1 Corinthians uh, 1, 27, 29 says, but God chose the foolish things of the world and shamed the wise. <laughs> you know, the, the foolish things of the world. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Uh, God chose the, the lowly things of this world and despised things and the things that are not to know fully the things that are so that no one may boost before him. This is what I like about, you know, God, right? God says, you know what? Hey, brother, Darryl, hey, brother, uh, Ponce, brother Emil, Milson, you know, doesn't matter your title and everything. I don't need anything about that, any, anything of that. I just need you, you know what, to be the lowliest, you know, the most simple, you know, and I'll use you. I always uh, joke around, you know, with some brothers, you know, at the main uh, church, you know, when uh, we had that mission work and everything, you know, how, you know, you know, how on, on the, the story, there's a story, you know, that Samson used the, the job of a donkey, you know, to kill 300 Philistines back in the days. I always say that, you know what, I always say it this way, you know what, if God used a, a, a job of a donkey, why wouldn't God do it with a, with a whole donkey, right? So uh, the truth is, you know what, I mean, God can use anyone, anyone, brothers, you know, to bring hope. Sometimes, you know what, even our testimony, you know, even the way that we act, you know, around uh, our family around our co-workers, you know, that speaks, you know, what, that, that we are different. You know, I rejoice so much and I give honor and glory to God, you know what, when someone tells me, you know what, I knew that there was something different about you. I knew that, you know what, that, you know, that uh, you're not, you're not just, you know, like the rest of the people. And you know what, it, it, it brings me a lot of joy, but at the same time, you know what, it, it scares me because I'm like, man, you know what, people are watching you know what i mean they're watching if, if you're working according to what you know the world got so this is this is the thing you know what i mean but god has chosen the foolish things of this world to shame the wise you know god has chosen the weak things of this world to shame the strong you know that's such a that's such a beautiful thing because god is saying you know what you lower yourself being one of the least ones that i would exalt you you know and why because to his honor and glory so that's what I, that's why it says at the end, you know, so that no one may boost before him. No one can say, you know, oh, you know, I'm, I'm this person, you know, I have all these titles, therefore, you know what, I mean, I, I, I'm better than somebody else or, you know, or because of the position that I have. God says, I don't care about that. You know, God says, you know what, I don't care how smart you are, you know, how intelligent you are and everything. I care because, you know what, I'm going to use you. Because I consider you, you know, one of the foolish, one of the least things in this world, one of the weakest, weakest ones, but I'm going to use it for my honor and glory. Everything that we do, you know, that's what the word of God says, you know what, everything that breathes, worship God, right? You know, so that's why you and me, 
you know, we're here for, you know, to understanding that concept, understanding that, that word that says, you know what, I mean, doesn't matter how we are, God is the one who has everything under control. You know, doesn't matter how smart we are, you know, at least we're pointing to the one and only one who died on the cross for you and me, and that is Jesus Christ. You know, we, we lower ourselves so we, he can be exalted because the only one that deserves honor and glory is our Lord Jesus Christ. So um, I want to share something, you know what, I mean, this is, you know, this is one of the, those testimonies, you know what, that brings me a lot of joy. You can do a little bit more homework, you know, talking about the lowest things, you know what, I, I love stories. I love stories because I think uh, at least I'm one of those people, you know what, I mean, that with stories, I feel like I learn more. And you can do more homework, you know what, I mean, this is, this is one, one of those stories that I it really brings me a lot of joy. This is a missionary. Her name is Eleanor Young. So uh, this this lady, you know what I mean? She had polio uh, when she was five, almost died, you know. And, and uh, you know, she said, you know what? That at the age of nine, she knew that God um, God was gonna do something with her, right? And you know, by the age of thirteen, she said, you know what I mean? She used to live in a very small kind uh, um, uh, village. On a very small, uh, um, I guess you could say, you know, very small town. You could put it that way. Very small town. And she said, you know what? There was a there was a Chinese missionary that went to preach at the church that she used to go. And um, you know, she said, you know what? I mean, she had this Chinese person who uh, had a broken uh, uh, English and barely used to speak and everything. You could barely understand. And she was 13 when that happened. And, you know, the story goes, you know, and, and you can read, you know, there's a lot of really nice uh, video about that. You know, that the story goes, you know what I mean, that with the broken English, this uh, Chinese uh, missionary, you know, that was super skinny because he was saying, you know, that the, the village that he was from, you know, there was barely food and everything. He made a call to the altar, right? You know, and the, uh, the call was, you know what I mean, whoever wants to be a missionary and God has called you to be a missionary, you know, um, come forward. And she said, you know what I mean? She was the only one that came forward that night, you know, or that day, you know what, when this uh, Chinese missionary was sharing the uh, the gospel and, you know, was sharing, you know what I mean, whoever wants to be a missionary, come forward. And uh, obviously, you know what, she had problems walking, you know, um, and, you know, time, time went by, you know, when she went to school and everything, and she went to the board of the school, the, of the church that used to belong, and she asked, you know what, that she could go out as a missionary. And obviously, you know what, I mean, she said, you know what, I mean, that normally they will give like a week to give an answer. And she didn't get an answer. She just got the answer, you know what, we're praying for it. You know, because obviously, you know what, I mean, you can imagine, right, this, this uh, girl, she could barely walk. And she wanted to go out of the country uh, as a missionary. So, I mean, you know, I'm sure that, you know, the pastors, the members of the church, you know what, they didn't mean to be mean. But they were just thinking, I know God can do something, but I mean, this one is a little bit over the board. You know, how are we going to send someone that is, you know, can barely walk, you know, to another country and is it possible? So bottom line, you know what, I mean, um, at, the, at the end of the day, you know, she was, uh, she was accepted. She was told, you know, yeah, you, you could go and, you know, share the gospel and everything. And the story, we're now spending too much time into it. You know what, I mean, she was such a huge blessing you know, in a, in a village, she was able to learn, you know, the language <clears throat> of the village. And, you know, that was one of the things, you know what, I mean, she was sharing, you know what, I mean, and, uh, oh, one of the story, the story goes, you know what, I mean, that um, when, when she gave her life to the Lord as a missionary, you know, she, uh, the, one of the pastors said, you know what, hey, this person, I don't think that she can go. And the, mich the Chinese missionary said, you know what, this is the person that God wants you to go. You know, and I'm talking about, you know, the, the, the word right here, you know what, it's literally, and the heart is literally missions. Mission. God can use anybody, you know, to literally, <clears throat> you know, um, share the gospel. That's why, you know what, I mean, God can use absolutely anybody. Doesn't matter the background, doesn't matter where God has taken you from, you know what, I mean, anything, God can clean you, you know, from anything that you have in your life, as long as you give your life to the Lord, 
right? You know what I mean? Uh, there's one verse in the Bible, and I'm I'm not the best one remembering you know what the actual verse, but you know there's a verse in the Bible that says you know what if our sins are as red as pomegranate, you know God will make it as white as snow. You know God changes everything. God changes the you know from negative to positive in a way. You know from you know black to white in a way. Everything that we do. So this is one of the one of those um um you know story that really blesses my life you know this is this is her when she was little on the left hand side and this is her on the right hand side you know what when she, she went to an african uh uh country i forgot the, the name of the country on top of my head but you know what i mean one of the things that they admire about her was you know what i mean the passion that she had you know this is how she used to care, they used to carry her there was another in the video you're gonna see you know what i mean when she was being carried when she was like you know because she was a teenager when she went there she learned the language. She taught them, you know what, the word of God and everything. And it was such a, such a huge, uh, you know, uh, transformation around the area. You know, now they have, you know, uh, uh, literally, you know, churches and everything. This is another one that I want to share. You know what I mean? Second uh, Corinthians seven fourteen says, "If my people, who are called my, who call my uh, by my name, we humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways." Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. This is such a blessing, brothers. You know what I mean? Um, you know, this picture right here that, that I have, you know what I mean? I, I will, you know, my, my phone uh, broke when I went to Guatemala, so I lost a lot of a lot of video and pictures and everything. And my computer kind of broke the last one that I, you know, uh, my, my main computer a couple of days ago. But I want to share this picture right here. Okay, this picture I never like to say much. You know what I mean? I'm not kind of kind of guy, that, that kind of guy that you know I like to post things around and everything. But this is a this is one of the uh, trips that I did to Guatemala recently. I went with my family and we did you know we did missionary work as well. And you know brothers like brother Ponce, you know what? Which you know I know that he doesn't want to take credit for that, but it was such a blessing, you know, sharing the gospel, sharing you know something for this kid. You know we gave them uh, you know uh, school supplies. You know, uh, if you see the little girl right here, you know, on the left hand side, you know, she has a, a New Testament. So, you know, we gave the New Testament to all the kids and everything. There was one picture that really, you know, uh, brought me a lot of joy. You know, uh, uh, you know, there was a kid kind of like, you know, this aging everything. And, you know, uh, this kid come for, you know, came behind me and I see someone, you know, I feel someone pulling my shirt in the back. And this kid said, excuse me, sir, excuse me, when a humble, sweet boy uh, he said, excuse me, sir, um, are you coming next year again? You know, brothers, it, it, it almost, it broke my heart. You know what I mean? I could, you know, I just turned around and, you know, clean my tears and everything because I felt literally the Holy Spirit talking to my life. You know what I mean? And saying, you know what? Hey, these people are hungry. You know, these people are hungry uh, to know more about me. And, you know, I'm talking about with the standpoint of, you know, missions, you know what? And, 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 and it broke uh, my heart because it's not just anywhere i mean it's not just you don't have to go to another country another city <clears throat> sometimes to to share the gospel you know we we have people around us all the time that we can share the gospel share the good news and the good news is this you know as first uh second corinthians is 7 14 if my people right who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the weak ways, then I will heal from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal the land. That is that is a huge promise right there. You know what I mean? If these people would understand, you know what I mean, that the biggest wealth that they have is knowing who Jesus Christ is in their lives. You know, things will change around. You know, uh, I, you know, I, I, I see, you know what, and I travel a lot, you know what, I see everywhere, you know what, I mean, the biggest, <clears throat> the biggest problem that people have a lot of times, you know what, is that they don't have God. You know, they they have alcohol issues, you know what, I mean, uh, sex issues, you know what, and these kids are abandoning everything and there, you know what, they're not being given uh, the a good example. And the reason being is because they don't they don't have God in their lives. And these are, you know what, I mean, this is just an example of everything that I'm giving you, but you know, the, the whole point is, you know what, we got to speak the truth. We got to speak the word of God more than ever to those people that, you know what, that they don't, they had, they, ne they had never hear the word of God, you know what, the, 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 the benefits of knowing God. 
the benefits of knowing Jesus. You know, when you understand what Jesus and the heart of Jesus, you know, you want to understand that um, we were called with the same spirit, right? You know what I mean? Giving hope with the same love, you know, letting them know that, you know what, God is there with you and, you know, what, God loves you. A lot of people, they don't even know, you know, that God loves them. You know, they feel judged, they feel less and everything because of the way that they are, you know, and that could be, you know, across the street from your house, you know, some of these people, they don't know that God loves them. Some people think, you know what, that there is no hope for them. Some people think that, you know what, that, that, um, that the way they are, you know, that's, that's how they, you know, uh, that's how pretty much, you know, the world sees them. And maybe the world sees them like that, but not God. So I want to share, you know, another, another, uh, verse you know what uh from joe uh 228 29 he says after and, and afterwards and i will pour out my spirit this is when we speak right when we speak the truth when we speak about jesus when we speak what jesus did for your life because remember brothers you and i we have a testimony you know we are walking testimony of what god has done in our lives says, and afterwards i will pour out my spirit on all people your sons and daughters will prophesy your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see these visions. And even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. This is such a beautiful, beautiful promise, brothers. Yes, we're going through a very turbulent times more than ever. And like my, you know, I have a business coach that he's a believer. And like he says, you know, buckle up because it's about to get even, you know, more crazy, you know, more challenging. You know that you know uh, things were not gonna you know they're not gonna get uh, any better before they get it worse. But we have hope more than ever. We had we gotta speak the truth. We gotta speak you know what God has done for the world. You know the, the promise that we have. You know in Jesus. You know for God so loved the world. We all know it, right? You know uh, John three sixteen. You know for God so loved the world. For God so loved my ne- my neighbor. For God so love my city, for God so love my country, for God so love my village, for lo- for God so love my family, you know, for God so love the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the beautiful, best promise that we have, you know, that if we die today, you know, we die for Jesus. If we live, we live for Jesus. That's the best promise, you know what, you know. The biggest thing that the world is lacking today is peace, internal peace. You know, people are, you know, again, you know, they're caught up, you know what? I mean, they're running, you know, getting more things and everything, thinking that they're gonna get they're gonna get peace. They're gonna be fulfilled. Uh brother Ponzi, I don't even know how much time we have, so I'm gonna, you know, just cut it out, make I thought that I was gonna make it short. So the last one, brother, just just going back to um Matthew 28, 29. And therefore, brother, brothers, you know, therefore, brother Daryl, therefore, brother Emerson, Freddie, Lauren, you know, the rest of the brother, therefore, go. <laughs> this is this is this is this is like the punch, like right in front of the face. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, make disciples of all your neighbors, make disciples in your, your job, make disciples even in your own church. You know what? That there may be brothers that may be attending, but you know, they may be thinking that it's just a cloud. You know, we got to speak the truth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit. Thank you, brother. Open up for discussion. Yeah, great uh, message, Brother Freddie. Good to see you again. Um, Thank you, brother. You, uh, let me start in First Corinthians 20. Uh, what, 28 and 29. 29 has really stuck out to me. Uh, it says, uh, no one can boast. Mm-hmm. And so I know we're, uh, as realtor, professional realtors, you and Ponzi and myself, um, you know, we're always, uh, most realtors boast about what they can do. And so um, I did just remind me of 1 Corinthians one eighteen. the message of the cross is foolish. Mm-hmm. To those who are uh, not believers. Um, I was. Uh, it just, I re- remember being when I first started real estate, and I saw the, the some of the corruption and just you know unethical things that was going on. 
And so I would just became a believer as well. So I kind of struggled with, you know, some of the things, but, um, we got, I remember one transaction where we got involved. It was a difficult transaction. I got my broker involved and the other, the, uh, selling agents broker involved. And, um, the other agent was discussing things and it was actually distorting the truth. So we say, and, uh, so I just told it like it was, I said, look, this is what happened. So it ended up being, you know, in their favor because the other agent distorted the truth, lied basically. And so after it all happened, my broker told me, he said that, uh, you'll never make it in this business because you're too honest. That was back in 1992. 30 years later, I'm <laughs> still in the business, but, uh, you know, again, you know, message of the cross, you know, and you're saying that uh, people notice that there's something different in you. And hopefully that goes for all of us here. Um, and it should, we are peculiar people We should be. And so, um, just to keep our, even in the midst of, you know, even make, well, I can do this and, and get ahead, uh, especially in, in real estate, it's so much in other industries as well. But, um, a, you know, I, and I'm sure you all have too, is that, uh, we keep our, our standards that we obey what the word of God says in all things. And, um, it just uh, uh, has proven for me to be quite successful. Um, and I know that uh, I'm studying uh, the, the divided kingdom right now with all these evil kings, and they thought there were better ways of doing things, and it, it never proved to be successful. Only the ones that uh, did what was pleasing unto the Lord that made success. So great message. This is a great reminder for us all. Thank you. Thank you so much. A great message. It reminds me the Great Commission because we all are responsible to have the great to have finished the Great Commission. We are here on earth because of God's strategy to impact the world with his message by bringing the gospel to each individual people group on earth. Because of Matthew chapter 24, verse 14 also, we see about. And to reach the world by reaching every people group on earth. Because God vision for the world to fill the earth with his glory for his name. We are responsible. It is remind me a great message for me. Thank you so much. God bless you, us. Praise God. Praise God for the message, brother. Um, <clears throat> it, it's wonderful to hear you speak um, just about your love for the Lord, <clears throat> for your love for his word. Um, I had no idea that you went down to Guatemala on a mission, and that, that's just wonderful. But um, but I love how um, you're, you're not, when you're talking about the word of God and when you're sharing the gospel, it's not, uh, there's no gimmicks, you know, just do this, just do that, and you'll be okay. You just need to realize this, or you just need to realize that. I feel like I hear that so much from people, um, as though it's something simple, you know, as though being born again is something you could just, you know, like there's a formula to it, but but, but it's the gospel. You talked about the grace of God. Um, it reminded me um, of First uh, Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verse uh, one and two, the apostle Paul wrote, and when I came to you, brethren, I did not come with superiority of speech or of wisdom, proclaiming to you the testimony of God, for I determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I love this because what the apostle is saying here is that it's not some gimmick or trick or some, um, you, you'll hear often that a, that a preacher or somebody giving a message, oh, man, he's just a really gifted speaker. What he said really resonated with me. And then you listen to it, and it's it's 35 or 40, 40 minutes of him, and then three or four minutes of, of a Bible verse or just maybe a little bit of, of Christ. But when I listen to your message today, um, what I felt like you were saying is that you determined to know nothing among us 
except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And that's just really refreshing to hear that. Um, I need to hear more messages like this. So praise God, brother. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Yeah, praise the Lord, brother Freddie. Thank you so much for, for sharing. Every single one of us is here because somebody obeyed the Great Commission. And the Great Commission, you know, verse 19, let me go to it really quick. Matthew 28. Matthew 28, verse 19. Obviously, that's the command for us to go and make disciples of the nations. We're baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But look at verse 20. Verse 20 stuck out to me and always has to this very day. And I do the things I do because of verse 20. Verse 20 says that to teach them to obey everything I have commanded. So it's one thing to go and make a disciple. It's another thing to teach these disciples to obey Jesus' commands. We want people to say this prayer. We want people to, to have you accept them into your heart. Yes. And then that's it. It's over. It's up to these people to, to, to grow in the Lord. But he's called us in verse 20 to teach these very people that you have made disciples to obey the things that Jesus has commanded. What did he command? What's in the New Testament? You know, Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, the Sermon on the Mount. What does he teach? He teaches a lot of things. He teaches us that, you know, we shouldn't divorce. He teaches us that we shouldn't give gifts publicly. He teaches us how to fast, how to pray. He teaches us not to hate. Um, there's a lot of things he teaches and that's the great command. The great command, yes, is to make disciples. But verse 20 says to teach them to obey the things that he has commanded. So thank you for the great reminder, brother. I just want to say thank you so much for, for your feedback and, you know, to pouring more, more, more fire into the fire, which is awesome. You know what I mean? Just being in the same spirit and to God be the honor and glory. And, and such a joy to be sharing with you guys. Amen. And you know, with the same you know, brothers that understand exactly what we're talking about. It's such a beautiful, such a beautiful feeling. <laughs> so I just want to say thank you so much to everybody. Praise God. Let me, let me close in prayer.